the worst case of trying to live your dreams or do something new, something you're passionate about, is often you'll go back to doing what you're doing now. Like if you don't burn bridges, I realize, oh, there'll always be a company that will hire me to sell. Probably this one, the one I'm selling for now. They'll be thrilled to have me back because I was making a millions a year. But even if not, I'll be able to get another sales job. I'll be able to do exactly what I'm doing now. And it was a mixture of that and really looking at what am I scared about? I'm not scared about savages and random people saying I failed. There's nothing to fear. And it, I was just selling myself to get to the point where it's like, right, let's give this a go. And the second I did that, life changed tremendously. And almost everyone I've ever met who goes on a similar path and takes that first step, alchemist vibes. Like when you follow your dreams in your heart, the whole universe conspires to help you. Welcome to the Mind Tracks podcast with breakthrough ideas to live your best life possible and how to make it happen. I'm Paul Sheely. And today we'll be talking with Carl Harvey. Carl Harvey is a powerful and passionate trainer, working with students globally to trust and believe in themselves, manifest a life of abundance, and create businesses rooted in passion and purpose. Carl hosts the interview series, The Big Life, is the founder of Abundance Book Club, and appeared in the movie Beyond the Secret. He is deeply passionate about personal growth and inspiring people to create bigger lives. Carl, so good to be with you. Thanks for being on this podcast. Thank you, Dr. Sheely. It's a genuine honor, privilege, and pleasure to be here with you, my main it's, man. It's always so fun to be with you. I love your energy. And we've had some great times together talking about human development, what's possible for people. And I would like to start with the idea of the point at which you recognized it was time to up-level your life. You're on track to do well in society, go to the university, do well in school, get a law degree, so on and so on. But at some point, things shifted. You realized that there was more for you to experience. Yes, I realized they were lying to me uh, because I did. Well, I read the John Grisham books growing up, uh, all the legal thrillers, and no one in my family had ever been to university on either side. So because I had quite a challenging upbringing, egoically, I decided I'm going to get a law degree because that's very rare and that will prove that I'm smart and successful and capable and I will be seen well in society's eyes. That's it. So I did that. Luckily, decided at the last minute after getting the law degree not to be a lawyer. And I went into corporate sales, which I thought was the best possible guess of how I could use my skills and talents and, and put them to good effect. But alas, I discovered, uh, I mean, very, very early on in my real world career, that even the most successful people that I was looking up to there, in this case, the top sales people, the people who had been there the longest, made the most money. I mean, they were miserable. They were depressed. Uh, Henry David Thoreau living those lives of quiet desperation. And my soul started to revolt and resist and just basically say, surely there's more to life than this. It can't just be this. I can't be working my ass off and putting all this time and energy in to emulate these people who lovingly are just, they're not happy. They're not lit up. They're not really living life. They still have to beg for time off, beg for a couple of days to go on holiday, no matter what they do. And Luckily, I learned to listen to that disquiet inside and went into it, as opposed to what I think a lot of people do, which is just so try and silence that voice or numb it in various different ways. And that was really the starting point for me, looking at the most successful people around me and realizing that that's, that's not for me. There's got to be another way. And that started me on the personal growth journeys, spiritual adventures, and in turn, led me to you pretty soon after that. Well, the the idea that we're raised by the culture, by the family system, by the educational system, by the religious system, to be who that culture thinks that we ought to be. So we buy into it very unconsciously. Developmentally, it's called the socialized mind when we reach right. adulthood. And what you're talking about is a transformational shift to something called the self 
authoring mind, you said, I'm, there's more here. I love the description that your soul started rebelling. Can you say <laughs> a little bit more about what some of those early signals might be for the people that you work with that bring them into the work of improving their lives and getting on a different track? Great question. I mean, you've helped me tremendously with this, with your courses and the paraliminals in particular. Um, I really believe that a deeper level, you often say other than conscious level, um, but if we're able to get out of our egoic mind and the uh, beta brain waves of stress day-to-day -day activity, there's a lot of insights there or there's a lot of understandings that can be had simply by sit sitting, listening, going within, meditating, doing the paraliminals, um, pursuing more spiritual practices, meditating. But in short, uh, I think I have have quite extreme experiences of this, even when I was a kid. So my disquiet or dissatisfaction with what I call the matrix now that I was plugged into at that point was far more extreme than a lot of people have. So a lot of people might just have a slight sense that things ain't quite right, or surely there should be more. Or, you know, I've worked all my life to get a law degree, and now I'm a lawyer, and this is, you know, society values me, but still I'm not waking up happy. Um, so luckily, I think, luckily or fortune or the universe decided that that's impossible for me, and I had to go within and try and figure it out. And at that time, I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. I had no idea what personal growth was. I had no idea what I would do. But because I was experiencing so much pain, struggle, frustration on a day-to-day -day basis, it, I just simply couldn't go on like that. I had a couple of dark nights of the soul, and but I didn't give up. I was like, there's got to be a better way. That was like the, the mantra. I was affirming again and again and again for months and months. There's got to be something else, surely. And bit by bit, I was led via breadcrumbs to new teachings, new ideas, new ways of being. And as soon as I caught a glimpse, for example, that success leaves clues, there's a science of success, psycho-cybernetics, think and grow rich. Very shortly after that, being um, introduced to paraliminals and listening to them and realizing, I feel so much more powerful, belief and confident, and I can do more. I just got hooked on that real quick. And it was just, that is the path I'm going to pursue because it was a quickening of my vibration. Sure, Wilde, the great late metaphysical author, used to talk about a quickening, that our, our soul, our energy, we can feel it when we're lit up by saying genuinely enthusiastic or inspired. And I started to seek out those little moments where I felt alive and happy. And um, by following those, it's led me to an incredible life, an incredible business and transformations. But it, it all starts by essentially going within I was asking, what's my purpose? Like, what am I here to do? Surely there's got to be more than this. Um, how can I How can I help? How can I serve? What am I here to do? And when you ask those questions, I believe you will get an answer. And if you listen to those answers and your intuition and move on them, a beautiful, brave new world will await. And that really is the key is about listening. So I'm hearing that you have to stay in that inquiry. There's a beautiful description of the heroic journey that we go on. You refer to the dark night of the soul. That's part of that process. When we cross the threshold from the old way of doing things into what's new and what's possible, not knowing what's there, there's always some kind of guardian at the gate, but then there's also helpers along the way. So you started getting those breadcrumbs the right authors, the right words, the right thoughts to think, the right practices to engage in. And those are the things that keep you going along the path, even though at first you might not really know where it's heading. No, absolutely didn't know where it was heading. I can <laughs> a thousand percent had no idea where it was heading. However, what I will say, and I advise a lot of my clients and friends on this who are uh, debating whether or not they should leave this job that they might not hate, but they might even enjoy it, but they don't love it anymore, but they've got a dream or an idea or a passion. You know, what if, what if I set up this business? That's what I'd really love to do. But what if I fail? What if it all goes wrong? Because I was so deeply uh, upset and these dark night of the souls and miserable. And because, as I mentioned at the start, the people I was looking up to, like the top high performers in the world I was in, were you know, miserable and, and not happy and lit up. I was able to really go within and go, if you 
go and start your own business or you start something else, what is the absolute worst case that's going to happen here? Oh, people might laugh at you. I think I had about 20, 15, 20 grand saved up at the time. You might burn through that 15 grand. That would be awful. Oh, you know, people might say, oh, you you failed. But then I was like, well, the people who talk smack to me, they're not really my friends or people I'd care about anyway. Like my friends would just encourage me. So I don't need to worry about that. And in short, the more I really went into what does the worst case thing look like and feel like and smell like and taste like, what am I actually scared of? I realized I genuinely had nothing to lose by giving this a try and going all in because, and this will be true for almost everyone, the worst case of trying to live your dreams or do something new, something you're passionate about is often you'll go back to doing what you're doing now. Like if you don't burn bridges, I realize, oh, there'll always be a company that will hire me to sell. Probably this one, the one I'm selling for now. They'll be thrilled to have me back because I was making a millions a year. But even if not, I'll be able to get another sales job. I'll be able to do exactly what I'm doing now. And it was a mixture of that and really looking at what am I scared about? I'm not scared about savages and random people saying I failed. There's nothing to fear. And by, and this is all an inner journey, by the way. Like this is, and I was listening to Abundance for Life and Effortless Success, your program with Jack Canfield. And it's a mixture of this self inquiry and then listening to people who've already achieved and manifested things that you want to. And it, I was just selling myself to get to the point where it's like, right, let's give this a go. And the second I did that, life changed tremendously. And almost everyone I've ever met who goes on a similar path and takes that first step alchemist vibes like when you follow your dreams in your heart the whole universe conspires to help you and it really is i feel we're being tested to get to that point where it's like nah, enough i won't settle for this but you know what I'll, I'll do my best here and if it doesn't work out i'll just go back to doing this but i've got to try and i really believe there's an energy a life force that supports and encourages that because literally everyone i know that's got to that point i'm going to give it a chance i, I love that. Never go oh i regret that oh that was terrible it, 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 there's always beautiful lessons to learn and advancement. Um, but yeah, you just have to get to a point where you realize there's nothing to fear except fear itself. Well, the, the fears, uh, I think if we keep the fears in the context of these are protection mechanisms, hundred percent, they're there to support you in staying safe. You could stay safe by doing the same old, same old, or you could be safe by achieving a true success that your heart desires. So that inner conflict oftentimes is partly moving away from and partly moving toward. And uh -huh. I think to the point that you've made, Carl, that the impetus, the thing that really drives us in the early stages is that profound move away from the pain and the angst that we're really suffering. And if you can feel it, I, there is a nice description of it as a sense of expansion. There's contraction and there's expansion. If you can stay in the inquiry and you can follow that expansion, even though you might not know exactly how you're going to get where you want to go, that's great. And so we can think about there is an ideal future, but we get to that threshold where we don't see a way there. There's just a big abyss. And that's where we do confront a lot of those fears. So when you think about the obstacles that your clients have faced and how you coach them through it. I'm hearing at least at one point that you say, do the, what's the worst case scenario going to be and will you be okay? Are there other practices that you give people to help people, to help them overcome those points of self-doubt, hesitation, perhaps fear, that really moves well, uh, them forward. Yes, but Dr. Sheely, honest answer is because I've sold millions of dollars of paraliminals for you. The, the first, often the first advice is get yourself the ultimate you collection of Paul Sheely's paraliminals. There's one for every goal, every challenge. Put one of them on in the morning, noon, and or night, and you are going to feel different. And that really is true Super. advice. Like yeah. that, it's helped me and so many, many of my friends, family, clients. There are, I mean, I believe we live in unparalleled blessed times where we're able to have access to, I mean, so much information, able to travel around the world and technologies like this where we're able to gain more resources or access more resources out of our subconscious mind. So uh, this is something I talked to John Asaraf um, 
I took him for dinner and his wife in London a couple of weeks ago when he was visiting. He talks about the power of daily inner size of every day. You take a little bit of time just to strengthen yourself and your resolve because the world is you know, crazy. There's a lot going on. There's a million things happening that we have to make sure that we're as strong as we can be. So um, I believe readers are leaders. Every single day I'm reading something, whether it's Napoleon Hill or your work or Bob Proctor or the old classics, Stuart Wilde, I mentioned more spiritual texts or listening to audio books. I feel like I catch a vibe from listening to a higher energy. Success leaves clues. And one of the other profound things that I get my clients to do is once they've decided on their vision, their intention, or at least this thing, a lot of people get caught up. What's my life purpose? I haven't got it all figured out, so I'll just wait here. So I get them to choose what's one thing. It doesn't have to be your purpose. It doesn't have to be totally life-changing. But what's one thing that you absolutely know for sure you'd like in your life? Like maybe it's a new relationship or a business or a pay rise or a promotion. Just pick one thing and make that the intention and play with that. And, and often it's better to start manifesting or creating intentions that are not truly huge and just something that, yeah, absolutely. If I'm honest, I would like an extra $1,000 a month. I'm going to play with that. And you start with with a goal or intention like that. I'm a big believer in the power of the subconscious mind and visualizing it and imagining it. But something I stole from Stuart Wilde, another thing, is the idea, and this has helped me tremendously to overcome procrastination and perfectionism. And you mentioned a couple of times, I haven't got the whole plan. I haven't got the whole plan. I don't know. What do I do? And Stuart Wilde's advice is just take one action a day towards your goals. What? One concerted action, and this was huge for me because when I first discovered this insight, I was reading quite a lot of Tony Robbins and the idea of take massive action every day, all day, every day. And it really didn't sit well with me personally. I wanted it to, I wanted to be more like Tony, but it was like, I don't really want to be this type A overachiever all day. And then Stuart popped, because I would do all right for a couple of days or a week, but then I'd be exhausted and then do nothing for a few days. And it was this on off. Stuart Wilde said, just one thing a day. When you do one thing a day, you build belief, skill, momentum, and also you take all the pressure off. Because rather than trying to be a perfect human and doing 50 things today, I'm just going to do one. I'm going to do this podcast with Paul. I'm going to do my absolute best. I'm not going to call it in. I'm going to be present. I will do my absolute utmost to give my best and serve. But after this, I let go. Now, here's the peculiar thing about this. Number one, one thing a day compounds over time, over weeks, months, huge, like way more than you would ever imagine, just the consistency of not having the ups and downs. But the other thing that got me was when I don't try and force myself to be the big boss doing Tony Robbins type output every day, sometimes I'll do that one thing and that's enough. Like today, for example, after this podcast, I probably will play my Harry Potter game because I haven't had the time this weekend, Paul Sheely. I'll have a little potter, but other times frequently, I'll do the one thing that I have to do or I've chosen to do. And my intuition is like, now let's do more. We're lit up. Let's play. Let's carry on. And it comes from pure inspiration and will. Like I want to do it rather than I feel I have to do it. And by taking that huge amount of pressure off of trying to be perfect and just committing to one thing a day consistently towards my goals. Um, I mean, that's changed my life and business and thousands of thousands of my clients because they were stuck in that perfectionism, procrastination. I've either got to be perfect or nothing. It's like, mm. no, just one a day. Just get moving. And then it gets easier and easier to stay in movement, in momentum. It's gorgeous. Yeah, the the idea that we have to get the system moving, it becomes what I like to refer to as dynamic steering. There's I'm adapting, I'm doing something, and I'm getting some feedback. I adapt, I get some feedback. I adapt, do more of what works. Whatever's not working, do something different. And as a result of that, the system is in movement. And that's another way to overcome the idea of procrastination or the sense of perfectionism is you don't have to do it perfectly. The fact that you're on a path of getting something that you really want and the action that you're taking is tiny enough so there's this idea of practice. There's also an, I, the idea of being in a routine that can help, like uh, Johnny Azareff was referring to, having a daily inner size, a way of turning inward and, and working internally to do something significant. 
Uh-huh. And then there's these embodied practices or habits that you end up with as a result of it. A habit isn't something just comes on instantaneously. It's through repetitive practice. And to the point that you're making, it becomes self-reinforcing. Success uh-huh. is the progressive realization of your ideal, you. right? Not oh, no, just... dying gal. I see you out here talking right. about classics. Absolutely. That's right. Talk about the classics. So success is a progressive realization. And sometimes it's the tiny steps that make the biggest difference. So when you're thinking about somebody living a big life, living into their higher expression, what, how would you characterize that? What is a big life? Excellent question. Um, I'm going to borrow this from a mutual friend, Paul McKenna. Uh, He says in his book, excellent book, I can make you rich. uh, The idea that, true abundance and living truly richly is living life according to your possibilities as opposed to your perceived limitations. So for me, a big life, it's absolutely different for each and every person, but it it literally distills down to what would you love to create today, this week, this year, regardless of, of why, like, what would you love to do? Like, do you want to be the big bowler in the Bentley and the Rolls Royce and have the millions of dollars? Do you want to be a world-class father, housewife, friend, accountant, lawyer? Do you want to take six months off a year to go on hol- like holidays? What is the ultimate ideal vision? I use the analogy or the metaphor of Aladdin's genie often with my clients just to get them to think expansively. It's like if Aladdin's genie came up and said, look, you can have absolutely anything you want as long as you can describe it to me clearly. Bob Proctor used to say, God rest his soul, that your goals should be so clear and so specific that when you write them down and I read your goals, I've got in my mind the exact same vision that you have in yours when you wrote it. So there's an element of that. And I mean, it sounds simple, but actually it's a huge amount of inner work to get to the point of acknowledging and accepting our true desires and things we really want. And that inner conflict of, oh, I'm a beautiful spiritual person and I want to help and heal people. But at the same time, I like Versace and Gucci and Bentleys. How do I balance that? And so your journey will be absolutely tailored to you and ever evolving. But for me, a big life is really, what would you love to do if there's no limitations? Because there's not. The only limitations we have are the ones we set up in our own minds, Napoleon Hill. What would I love to do? What would I love to give? Who do I want to be? And then to start moving towards it, the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And as I'm sure you've experienced a million times, when we reach our goals it's delightful and glorious and it's brilliant and we get a lot from that but then the next level comes up yeah that's not it. To us. <laughs> right. yeah and i used to take that as a bad thing oh i thought once i had this yeah. that was it that's yeah. bad but it's it, i really believe you know there's a spiritual teachings that point to uh, the god force itself is just constantly seeking new forms of expression and that's why when we manifest the car or the business or the clients or whatever the thing is that we truly desire then a new desire bubbles up and even higher up but for me it's a great video game it's a glorious video game where the things i'm playing with now manifesting are you know if if even five years ago you would have said these are the games you're going to be playing like impossible delightful it's 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 glorious so it's it's a peculiar mix of Burning desire, Napoleon Hill. I absolutely want this. This is, if there's no limitations, I want life to be like this. And I want to work three days a week. And I want to be on the beach. And I want to have these things and these experiences. Whilst at the same time knowing that as and when you get that, it's not going to change anything about you. It's going to, you know, it it might be nice, but then there'll be something else to play with. And when you embark upon that game, it could be a very beautiful thing. And I find that the more you achieve the, the material goals you want, if you're a good person, which I'm sure everyone here will be, your vibe attracts your tribe and all, you end up thinking about, oh, how can I serve more? How can I have a bigger positive impact? How can I look after my family or my friends or make sure Paul shealy has got all that fancy tequila that he likes for his road trips and whatnot? And it, you start thinking of others more and more, and it's it's a beautiful adventure to be on, certainly compared to the beautiful savages in the Matrix in the office who just silence that inner voice that said, there's got to be more than this. And instead, they just struggle on again and again and again. Um, Nicely said. Beautiful. And and depending upon the stage in life that you're at, 
right? For me, when I was starting a business, I was delighted to be able to make a car payment, right? (laughs) Let alone get the ideal car, right? I remember making the first $8 sale um, to come in on the internet from an internet business. uh, And I was just like, oh my God, I have made it. And it, no, $8, it it was, if I could do it once, I could probably do it twice and then maybe 10 times. But just the fact that I'd done it once and I wasn't in an office and I wasn't dealing with any of these savages telling me you're not behaving right, Mr. Harvey, you've got to be like this in a corporate world and all, all of that negative energy. That $8 was truly a bigger buzz than when I got the Bentley or the penthouse or, you know, in movies, same movie, Beyond the Secret, Amazon Prime, me and, me and Dr. Sheely. Yeah, it's, right. it's all great and it's all fun, but that first $8, let me tell you, sauce. How about it? Yes, there's a lot There's a lot to be said that our goals will continue to evolve. And what I've often said to people who are in their legacy years that once you realize you can get the income, you can get the job, you can get the relation, you can get the car, you can get the house, you can get the vacation, you get all of it, you can. You can. You can use this power that we're talking about to manifest all that you truly desire and set your mind upon. No question about it. There's so many demonstrations of this in your life, my life, lives of our clients. There's no question about it. And when it's all said and done, then what? What are you here to give to the world that you want to leave the world a better place when we're complete? And that's a beautiful thing to recognize as well. These two things can happen simultaneously. I had a business partner who said, well, you have to do good before you can do well. No, he said, you have to do well first financially oh, no, before no, you can no. do good in the world and i, I said, had a lot of people telling me that when i started giving money yeah. to charity when i first made a little i think it was I might have had a real job when i was still selling i think i made a hundred grand in a year which no at that time at that age was like a small fortune and i started right. giving money to charity and my mates were like what on earth are you doing giving it away yet yeah, it's crazy but it just felt intuitively uh, years later i heard an alan watts um uh, speech where he's um, paraphrasing but to the truly enlightened man or woman the idea of hoarding money in abundance is is ludicrous you must share it you must give it to others and 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 circulate it and then years later as i learn actually i'm being smart and almost machiavellian because money has to move around it has to circulate so this subconscious desire to share and to give i think it's in all of us really the vast majority of humans have got so much good in us but with all the fear programming and the the scarcity and society telling you that you be a good accountant and you go to work for 50 hours a week and, you know, get hammered on the weekend, uh, but you're lucky to do this. Uh, And most people do blindly accept it. Perhaps not most anymore, but more and more are beginning to wake up, not just in my generation. Uh, You mentioned the people in their legacy years, a, a significant subset of my clients are the lawyers, accountants, doctors, entrepreneurs who've made their millions. They've got the beautiful house and the picket fence and the cars and they've done the trips. And they wake up one day and go, what now? Because I'm still pretending I'm an accountant 50 hours a week. or whatever. And it, I, feel, I, I really feel honored to serve those sort of people as well because it takes some some guts to get to that stage and admit, oh, that wasn't it after all. Like I've, yeah. been on a, I've been on a mission that perhaps – if I would have recalibrated a little before and it, it's not hedonism. It's not about just doing things that you love all the day. You know, I have challenges and things to overcome every day, but I embrace them because that means that I'm growing. But fundamentally, if my vibration is off and if I'm working or in a relationship or with people and it doesn't feel good and I'm not lit up, I'm not enjoying it for too long. I take that as a sign that you, you need to shift paths a little bit. Life is supposed to be fun, I believe. We're supposed to be lit up and excited. I mean, you've been doing this years and years, Paul. Every time I speak to you, you're excited and lit up about the work you're doing today or this thing you've created or what's coming next. Yes. What's your secret? Oh, the secret, right. So this, there, if there are five essential emotions, we've, <laughs> got, we've got joy in the place of our heart. We've got a sense of peace and groundedness. We've got a sense of contentment sense of gratitude and a sense of happiness. These are the five elemental emotions. They're built into our physiology. This has been studied for thousands and thousands of years. So it gets to that point where we recognize if 
one of those isn't there. If these five aren't truly present in my experience, I probably ought to be making a shift to do something about that. So I love this notion that not only can you have a signal to recognize that you've gotten off track somehow, but you can move toward the thing now that you do know that you are more interested in. If I could ask for your your favorite way to help someone get back on track if they've fallen off, if they've kind of lost touch with that essential energy vibration frequency of possibility, what is your go-to remedy to get someone right you know, upright and moving once again. Dr. Paul Sheely's Paralympics collection, well, I would say. You. How do you ever say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's I'm really... Even, I'm, only, I'm <laughs> half playing, but not really. No, no, that, no, no. I, I would I, absolutely say, listen to one of these a day for sure. But the and other I thing... I do too, right? Yeah, still good. I do, absolutely. <laughs> Learning Strategies Corporation in Minneapolis. This You're is listening awesome. to the Prosperity Paralympics. Yeah. And honestly, it, even just saying that, taking the piss... It puts me in that <laughs> ready. Um, no, that really is something that I get people okay. to do because the power, energy, belief that it gives them, and it compounds, obviously, working with the other than conscious, subconscious mind, huge. The other thing that I do, if they're really lost and, and uncertain, is I force them to take a day, ideally, or a half a day to themselves where they take all pressure off. They stop trying to achieve. I'm like, what would you love to do? Do you want a glass of wine in the bath, girl? Do you want to go for a walk in the woods? Do you want to go to a spa, get a massage? And literally take all the pressure off. And the one and only goal is, how can I enjoy today? Like, how can I really not be off going, oh, but what about tomorrow? What about next week? What am I going to do about the clients? Or this or that? Just to remind them, you know, the power of now. If, nice. For example, if you're in the spa or you've got, you know, so many of us have got things in our life right now that we desired, dreamed of, wished for, intended for months or years. And we forget that. The, the the mind gets used to it very quickly. So whether it's going for a drive in the car that you wanted for years that you've got now, or the beautiful house, or just slowing down and looking at it, I, I tell my clients to just have a day where the one and only thing that's important is that you enjoy today. Now, maybe that means going on a trip, doing saying half crazy, or maybe it means getting in the bath with a good book and just reading, but connect reconnecting with yourself and just having that. Oh, I'm having a great day today. I didn't do anything, got a coffee, read a book, didn't do much to reconnect with that energy as opposed to constantly more money, more success, more this, or whatever the story is. That's gonna that's gonna reconnect you to your heart, the universe. I call it the God force, it will whisper to you. Wayne Dyer said, In silence and solitude, the universe will whisper to you. Like go out for a walk in the woods with nothing on your mind, or do Paul Sheely's walk about paralympics, which are pure source as well. Magical those. Yes, yes. And, and but just take the take the pressure off yourself. Because if you can't enjoy your day off or a day at the spa or in the bath or just doing nothing or reading a book, that for me is a red flag that yeah. you know, I'm not letting myself enjoy. I'm telling a story a narrative of life that I must be this, this, and this in order to feel any sort of happiness. And usually you're not feeling happy when you're that stressed. And it took me months, if not years to be able to, to be a world-class relaxer. I've had a lot, <laughs> obviously I couldn't take a day off. I couldn't take a minute off. I, I was know. not relaxed. I, uh, I, I should have done more. Should have done more last week. I know. Yeah. That yeah, was a I, big I, journey for me. Now I'm world-class at relaxing. Let me tell nice. you. Congratulations. It's, it's like photo reading I had to do. Like, how do people who are relaxed, world-class relaxers, how do they do it? How do they not worry about the future or tomorrow or this? And then when you get that vibe back, you, you will get a sense of what you would love to do. It might not be the full life purpose in one, but it might be, you know what, I'd love to have a business selling stuff on eBay or have this. I've always had an idea to do candles or fashion or coaching or whatever it is, but just to allow yourself to play with that with no attachment. Yes. Because life is short, like crazy times going on. We don't know how long we got. And if you can't enjoy today, that, yeah, learn to enjoy today. And then from there, build up to bigger and bigger things. Yeah, learn to enjoy this moment, right? So I had a, a good friend in the early days of my work who was a consultant, was a teacher, and self improvement guru. And 
he said that he was consulting working like mad. And he decided that once a week, he would knock it out of bed. He would stay in bed all day and just read heavy metaphysical literature that oh, would shift his mind. He said his income tripled that year by yeah. taking an entire day off every single week. So brilliant, great, great way to think about it. I really appreciate it. And Carl, I've loved this session. Thanks so much for it. If you have a parting shot of encouragement for everybody that we're speaking with right now, what is the one, one idea that you would like to leave lodged in consciousness that can oh, help a nice. person right now, right in this moment today? Uh, truly, I've come to believe with absolute certainty that any desire, impulse, goal, or intention that you have, especially the ones that you write off, say, no, that's too big, or that's, that's too much to ask, you can and are supposed to have them. They are there for you uh, without going too deep into quantum physics and holographic universe. They exist somewhere in another universe and we summon them into existence. It's already in existence. There are no limitations other than the ones you set up in your mind. But life can be challenging. Life can be tough. Arm yourself with the best possible teachers, mentors and technologies. And uh, to summarize that, yeah, listen to inspiring talks like this. One thing a day, one action a day. Celebrate yourself when you do that and do that work on that genius subconscious because 95 to 99% of your resources are at that level. And I've been half joking about this, but Paul's work has had a tremendous positive impact on my life because I was so de depressed, crazy, anxious, upset all the time. And over many, many weeks, months, and years, my subconscious beliefs are now really, really supportive. I, I truly believe I can achieve anything I put my mind to. And it's by doing the inner work again and again and again. But above all, just enjoy the journey. If you can enjoy today, you've won the game of life because that's the whole reason people want to become millionaires or billionaires or have a beautiful husband, wife, is so that they feel good and they feel happy. And if you could do that today, you've beat the system. Deepak says, choose happiness first and it all falls into place. So yeah, enjoy today. Start with that. And it will all unfold. Love it. Love it. Carl Harvey, thank you, my friend. Peace and blessings. Super good to be with you. Love you, Dr. Sheely. Boss man, thank you. Bye, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Carl Harvey. You can learn more about Carl at carlharvey.com. That's C-A-R-L-H-A-R-V-E-Y.com. And now in the second part of the podcast, it's just you and me. I'll tell you how to use the paraliminal sessions in the MindTracks app to easily handle obstacles, and move toward the success you want, especially as it relates to our discussion with Carl. If you're new to the relaxing paraliminal audio sessions, they use breakthrough technologies to activate your whole mind in only 20 minutes to help improve any area of your life. Let's get going. Welcome to the follow-on to my conversation with Carl Harvey, where we had a chance to dialogue about the transformational change into the big life that our heart is truly calling us to live. There were several cool ideas that showed up in our dialogue, and I want to use this as an opportunity to suggest how you might use some of the paraliminals that could assist in each of these major areas. Obviously, Carl is a big fan of paraluminal technology. He didn't tell the story about using $30 to buy his very first paraluminal and what an effort and how much he had to read about it and think about it. But he really has applied the technology to gain access to his non-conscious mind to really be on track to creating the life that he's choosing to live. So I thought of five different topics that he and I got into. The first is 
creating a transformational shift in our lives? How do we move from whatever level we're playing at into a bigger expression of who we are? Secondly, is the idea of attending to models of success. He talked about looking at those who are in front of him in the life he was committed to living and realize that they were not the models of the successful life that he was interested in living. So he began looking for those role models and found in the books and in the podcasts and in the films, those sorts of people that he did want to model and start to live the life that he was choosing to live. The third area is how we confront our hesitation, our self-doubt, or our fears in taking that bold step forward into a bigger life. The fourth area is taking a break, being able to focus in on the power of now, to be able to pull ourselves aside from the busyness of leaning into our lives and being able to recharge, refresh, and stay focused on what it is that we truly do want to create. And if for any reason we happen to fall off track, the fifth area is how do we keep on track to the life that we're choosing? So the paraliminals that I thought would go nicely along with these five areas, the first area creating a transformational shift, I believe it's the new history generator that helps us assess where we have come from, where we have gotten to, and where we want to go as we look into the ideal future that we're choosing to create. The new history generator doesn't specify an ideal future, so it's especially good in the early stages to let it come, let it emerge in your mind as you reflect on the life you've lived and where you would like to go from here. Session B of the New History Generator is a daily review of how you're living today, which was another important part of the recommendations that Carl had. Being able to look at today and see, I lived it well. Today was a good day. I made progress on a small step in the right direction. And that self-reinforcing mechanism is a profound way to live our lives. Benjamin Franklin talked about that mental review of the day as being one of the most important self-development tools that he used to create his life. The second area in models of success, the go-to is the new behavior generator, where a session A on that recording is looking at your own life and seeing what isn't working and being able to reframe that. <clears throat> Whatever you're now doing does have a positive intention. It does suggest to you a way forward towards something that you want. But if it's not getting you there, we need to reframe the behaviors that we're involved in. How can we make that shift? Look at the positive intention and think, what new and creative ways could I use to keep that intention in place? For example, I made mention of the idea that from time to time, we'll do our best to live the life, but part of us is pulling back so that we don't lose the goodies that we're now enjoying. Well, that part of us is actually supporting us. It's protecting us from not failing. While another part of us is looking at the future we're wanting to create and saying the best way to feel safe is to create the life I want. So to take that protection mechanism and reframe that, it has a positive intent. What are new and creative ways we can use that positive intention to get what we want? And then 
session B of the new history or new behavior generator is who is a model of the thing that I want to be able to do? Who does it well? Who's living that way? And then you can actually let your inner mind model their success strategies to become a part of your behavioral repertoire. Very powerful. I've often said that the new behavior generator is an entire self-improvement course in a single recording. It's really something. The third area we talked about is confronting hesitation, self-doubt, and fear. And there are two that come to mind for this. Certainly anxiety-free is perfect. Anxiety-free is showing you that anxiety is a natural physiological response of projecting a negative unresourceful image of a potential future into the future. And rather than projecting that there, saying, uh, well, what if I projected beyond the successful accomplishment of what I truly want? Then I look at that. Anxiety will automatically disappear. Again, it's part of that protection mechanism, right? If we see lack and limitation in the future, We'll hesitate, we'll doubt, might even self-sabotage to keep us from getting there. But when we can project an image of success, everything inside of us opens up and begins to guide us along that trajectory to the success we truly, truly desire. The second paraliminal, which I feel would be super helpful there, is called personal genius. Because quite often, when we're looking to do something we've never done before, we talked about becoming an entrepreneur. Carl didn't know what it meant to live as an entrepreneur. How do you do that? But he also said, if you set that goal, it's within you to be able to do it. You just need to learn how. So personal genius is that way showing paraliminal that will give you self-esteem as a learner to learn anything that you need along the way to the success that you truly want to live into. The fourth area is about taking a break and just enjoying this day. He called it the power of now. But the idea is when you're push, push, pushing, push, push, pushing, and you're just feeling separate from your real passion and joy, even though you're on the trajectory to your success, sometimes you need to step aside. As he said, go soak in a bath, go get a massage, take a break, read a book. And I found that the self-love paraliminal is really ideal for this because you get to have that inward reflection that connection with yourself, not only your past self, but also your future self, your inner child and your inner elder. And you take a break to really connect with what matters to you. Another paraliminal is you deserve it that I created with Lisa Nichols. Super important. Just to reflect on the idea that this is yours. You can do this. You deserve to have this good. And the final one I did with Bill Harris called Fresh Start. Really lovely way to focus on the power of now. Realize that right now you have the opportunity to create the future that you want. You've got a fresh start, fresh start on life. And if you can step into this day with a feeling of joy, with a sense of peace, with a full-in commitment to living the life that you choose. Powerful way, powerful way to use the energy to create your life. So the fresh start paraliminal is that. And the final area that I talked about with Carl was sometimes we get off track. It might be because we've failed at something, might be because we've burned out on it. How do you get right? How do you write yourself and keep on keeping on? And there were a couple that were mentioned. He talked about 
Bob Proctor and the paraliminal power thinking is such a great one in that regard. It just helps get your thinking in alignment with what it is that you're choosing. Sometimes we do our best, but the College of hot, Hard Knocks knocks us down. And it's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up, right? So power thinking is really helpful in that regard. Another one is prosperity paraliminal, which says that if you if you feel a lack of time, of energy, of money, of support, of whatever it might be, any area where you feel that you're off, you don't have what it is you need, the prosperity paraliminal really puts you in touch with this abundant universe that brought you here. Now, Carl is a big fan of this notion that the universe is always conspiring to help us live into the highest expression of our lives. The universe wants us to deliver our life's purpose. And once you're on this track, once you've taken that transformational step into the life that you're willing to live, the universe is going to give you what you need. You need to keep in touch with that universal energy. And that's where the prosperity paraliminal really comes on. Certainly in creating my businesses from nothing, <laughs> the idea of having an absolute faith, a, a deep and relentless knowing that the universe has my back, that was essential. And the prosperity paraliminal is the go-to anytime you're starting a new project, a new endeavor, a new relationship, whatever it might be, whatever it is that's new, know that the universe has your back, is giving you everything you need to get on track, to stay on track, and to realize the future that you truly desire to create. Thanks very much for being a part of this. Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining me today. I applaud your willingness to maximize your potential. You can easily use the Paraliminal Audio Sessions in the MindTracks app to stimulate your non-conscious mind, that is your inner mind, to reduce any resistance in your life and to propel you toward the success you want. Visit MindTracks.com to learn more. These amazing audio tools have helped millions, and I encourage you to bring them into your world today. Be sure to be back for more episodes of the MindTracks podcast. You'll find insightful conversations with authors, experts, and thought leaders, all devoted to improving your life's experience. Thank you again for being here on our MindTracks podcast.